it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet this beautiful deep comfort scarf. This is a faux fur scarf that has a very luxurious, uh, cozy feel for the chilly days ahead. We're gonna be using a faux fur yarn that is very, very soft. I'm gonna talk about it in more detail in just a moment. But it has uh, this like really soft, warm feeling. So it's a really fun scarf to make and wear especially. The finished scarf is about 70 inches long and about 14 inches wide. So it has a nice, wide, um, generous size to it. And again, it's just a really kind of one of those feel good scarves, okay? So let's get started. We're gonna talk about the supplies first and then jump right into the tutorial. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to get those dimensions as you go along. We're going to be using a 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook for this project. And then for the yarn, we're going to be using a yarn called Huga Fur. And this is kind of a new word for me, so excuse me if I'm not pronouncing it completely correctly. But this is the uh, Danish uh, concept of coziness, and there are whole books on it. It's super interesting, just as a side note to kind of read up, and they sort of captured that in this photo. Um, on the yarn label, but this is from Red Heart Yarns. I'm going to be using two balls of this, both uh, balls in the dusty lilac color. Now this yarn is a kind of like a faux fur yarn, but it's not super fluffy. It is, I find it's to be pretty easy to work with. It has like a, a central kind of thread through the center. So I find that it's um, easy to see your stitches. Um, some of the fur yarns out there are very, very fluffy. So this one was a little bit more of a compact strand, uh, but it is so soft and like feathery and fluffy and it just is gonna make a really good shawl for us to uh, make and wear or give as a really wonderful gift. Now I'll be using two balls of this. This is 260 yards or 238 meters. And um, again, I'm gonna be using the dusty lilac color and it does come in dye lots, just so you know, if you're using two balls of the same color like I am, just know that it does come in dye lots. And if you'd like to substitute yarn, if you'd like to try a different texture yarn um, or something like that comparative, uh, just look for a bulky five on the yarn weight scale and look for the recommendation of the 6.5 millimeter K crochet hook. There are a lot of yarns out there that recommend the K hook, so you really, um, can choose whatever you like, but this one was uh, my favorite choice for this particular project. This is machine wash cold, dry on the gentle cycle, just as a side note, and it is 100% nylon faux fur. With these fuzzy yarns like this, it's hard to see, but there is like a central thread that runs down the middle of this yarn, so you can sort of see the structure under the fuzziness, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind as you work with this yarn. Also, this is gonna be a really easy um, mesh, mesh stitch. That's a mouthful, mesh stitch. So we're gonna be working into the spaces. Um, so I try to keep it as easy as possible because of our fuzziness of our yarn. So what we wanna do is chain 41 to begin. Now, you can chain any number as long as it's an odd number if you need to change the width of your shawl. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Whoops, I dropped my 24. Let's try the 24 again. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40 and 41, okay? So here is our starting chain, and it sort of looks like a fuzzy rope for now, but we're going to be working our stitches back into these chains. So 
when we do that, just keep in mind, like I mentioned before, that central thread, you can, you can see the stitches, there's just a fuzzy halo around them. So you can see sort of that central thread running through. Okay, so for row one, what we wanna do is in the third chain from the hook, you can also kind of feel for your stitches too. So we're gonna go one, two, and three. So here's my third chain from the hook. You can sort of feel the loops in there. And we're gonna do a double crochet chain one, okay? So wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then we're going to chain one. The next thing we wanna do is skip a chain. So again, you may need to kind of feel for that a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing. Work a double crochet, chain one. Now I promise you this row one is the most challenging row of the entire project, just because we're feeling around and having to look very closely at the chains. But after this row, we're just gonna be working into the spaces and it'll be a lot easier to see, okay? So skip a chain and then in the next chain, work a double crochet, chain one. Skip the next chain and the chain after that, work a double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, work a double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, do the same thing, double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, same thing, we're doing this all the way across. Double crochet, chain one, next chain, skip that one, the chain after that, double crochet, chain one. And you can see we got this wonderfully textured, fuzzy beginning here. Next chain, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, skip the next chain, chain after that, double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that, double crochet, chain one, skip the next chain and the chain after that one, we're just gonna keep going all the way across, doing the same thing, okay? We got a little bit more ways to go. So just keep working your double crochets and your chain ones all the way across. But make sure you're skipping a chain and then working into the next one, okay? Now, as a side note, if you happen to skip two chains by accident or missed one or what have you, which is, fairly easy to do with this yarn um, because of the, the fluffiness of it. What you can do, um, it's very forgiving. It will be not very noticeable at all. Okay, and we're just doing this all the way across to the very end, okay? So row one is complete. So we have all of our lovely stitches, okay? It doesn't look like a whole lot now, but you're gonna get some lovely um, volume and length very quickly because of our larger hook. Okay, so for row two, now row two is the row you repeat for the entire shawl. So this really is a simple, laid back, kind of feel good shawl. The yarn is gonna feel very nice in your hands. It's a very easy stitch. So what we need to do for row two, the row that we'll be repeating, is to chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. Okay, then what we're gonna do is in the spaces now, these large holes, not stitches, but the spaces, the areas in between the stitches, we're gonna be working into those now. So in that very first space, work a double crochet, chain one. Next space, double crochet, chain one. Next space, double crochet, chain one, as you can see, this is so super easy. 
and we're going to get some really nice texture here with just some very minimal, minimal stitches. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. And again, when you worked into the chains, if you miscounted or skipped one or did an extra one, it's really not going to make a huge deal. Um, you're not really going to notice much at all. It's going to be very camouflaged. So no need to worry if, you know, you accidentally miss something. A lot of patterns, that's very important not to miss things, but this one, uh, the yarn is very forgiving. Now, if you, you are using a different yarn and not using this yarn, it will be more noticeable, but then again, at the same time, you'll be able to see the chains a little bit easier too. So you probably would have less of a chance of missing things. So it really depends on the yarn that you're using. But this yarn is very forgiving um, and it kind of helps when you're trying to see what you're doing here. But now, from now on for the entire shawl, we're gonna be working into the spaces, okay? So I'm just coming up to the end of the row here. We're just working those double crochet chain ones. And we also need to work a double crochet into the turning chain space. So that space at the end of the row there, we're also gonna work a double crochet into that as well, okay? So here's what we have so far for row two. Now to finish your shawl, we're just gonna be repeating row two over and over and over again. So we worked up uh, some nice length on our shawl and I wanted to just show you really quickly, um, when you're ready to switch yarn balls or if you wanna switch colors, I just wanted to show you how to do that really quickly. So I'm just gonna work my last stitch into that last uh, space of the row. And then what we're gonna do is when you're ready, you can cut the yarn, uh, leaving a tail. Now this is about, I would say six inches or so. And then all you're gonna do is wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through the loop, okay? Then grab, now I'm just gonna grab the same yarn just because I'm just showing you, but um, then you're gonna grab the new yarn and if you get some a uh, couple crumbs, like sometimes the, the little faux fur pieces can sort of sprinkle down, just, just sort of like pull Give your yarn a little pull before you do that so they won't get everywhere. And what you're going to do is take your hook and go back into that same stitch where you left off. Now you can see, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see, but you can see here our knot where we just tied off. There'll be a little loop here and you can sort of see that uh, central thread area. Just stick your hook back into that last stitch that you worked and then grab your new yarn, hook it back onto the yarn and pull it through. And then you're just going to tie it right on. Now, there are lots of other ways to join a new um, ball of yarn or new color. If you have a preferred method, uh, and I'm just tying this on too, but if you have a preferred method, definitely feel free to do that. I like to just cut it and tie it right on. That's just my favorite way to do it. Okay, and then when you're done tying it on, you can go back into that seam stitch where you just tied it on, bring up a loop, and then you're ready to keep going. So at this point, we're going to chain do our chain and then keep going with our project. But that's all you have to do and so that way you'll know how to join a new yarn ball if you need to do that or a new color. So I'm going to keep working my rows and then we'll rejoin towards the end and we're going to learn how to do the finished work of this project. Just working those last couple of stitches of our scarf and I'm just going to put that last one into the end here. Same thing we've been doing. So when you're done, you can cut the yarn, which I've already done, and then fasten off. Wrap the yarn around the hook, pull it through the loop, and then what you'll want to do is grab your scissors and your tapestry needle, because all we have left, now I've woven in some of the ends already, but you want to weave in all of your ends, so let's take care of this one here. Now this scarf is completely reversible, so you don't have to worry about weaving them into one side or the other. So just thread your tapestry needle, and then you're just going to go in, and this furry yarn is very forgiving, so that your end will kind of just disappear in there, okay? So just go in one direction with your needle, and then come back in the other direction, just like that, okay? Pull that through, 
And then any other ends that you have along the way, uh, you can take care of those as well. And then just give your yarn a little snip and your scarf is complete. So let's kind of spread it out and look at it. It looks very, very pretty. It's a super cozy scarf for the chilly days ahead. And that's it. So that is how you crochet the Deep Comfort Scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again. Thanks.